What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Long Live Mosey, a.k.a. King Mosey, a.k.a. God Dog Sign. Formerly known as King Gutter. I know some of you are probably wondering where have I been in the dance world? Why haven't I been posting videos? Why haven't I been teaching? Uh, this video uh, I'm going to make for y'all and just let y'all know a couple of the reasons why I stepped away from dance. Now, if you don't know, like I said before, the, I was formerly known as King Gutter. Uh, then I went by the name King Mosey. I was a freestyler, dancer, choreographer. I worked in the industry for about, uh, professionally I worked for about eight years. I was dancing for about 15 plus. I did a lot of freestyle battles. I did Just Day Boo in New York. I had won that in 2014 uh, with my guy uh, Swift, Swins uh, from uh, Vegas, A-Team LV. I won a lot of battles in between. Uh, started a group, The Good Fellas, Sacramento, California. Moved out to LA, won some battles out there. Started doing some industry work, did some music videos. I think JoJo, uh, When Love Hurts, was my first music video. And then from there, I kind of just did a bunch of different things. Daddy Yankee, um, I did some Usher, I did movies. I did a whole bunch of things in the industry um, for my time in LA, and it was a beautiful time. I really loved it. I enjoyed doing what I was doing. I love meeting new people. I love being in, in rooms of just, you know, enthusiastic, uh, creative people. But it also came with some hardships. It also came with some things that uh, I didn't enjoy about it, which led me to ultimately stepping away from dance. Um, one of the reasons why I stepped away from the industry in LA because it, it became repetitive to me. Audition, book, work, be happy, uh, come home, audition, book, work, be happy. But <clears throat> that was only if it was consistent. Um, there'll be days, weeks, months of times where there was no work and you really had to grind it out. Uh, I did not have a job at the time. I did not have like a, a side job or anything. So I was fo like 100% all my income was through dance. So the, the, the repetitiveness for me was kind of like, it was starting to wear, wear on me like, what, what's next? You know, how can I elevate this? Where can I go? And where, where can I see myself in the next five years if I don't want to dance? Like, what can I build? So my mind started going other places on how can I build a entity where when I decide to stop dancing, I can still make a living or make a career off of this entity. Um, I was involved in dance so much and just like the re like the repetitiveness of it that I I never really fully got to experience I wouldn't say experience but I never really fully got to expand my horizons when it comes when it came to other things even just like having a YouTube channel like I have right now I didn't I had this channel for years and I've got over I had over 24,000 subscribers or something like that I know everybody a lot of people unsubscribe because I haven't used the channel but even then just not utilizing my resources like I should have because I was so focused on dance and just trying to stay in the loop of things because I felt like once I left the dance world that I wouldn't be able to come back. Another reason why I stepped away is because there was a lot of drama going on in the scene. You're going to say this, there's drama everywhere. Yes, there is. But because there's no structure in the dance world, like it's kind of like a free for all, everybody's like freelance dancers, if that makes sense. Um, the drama became a little bit too much. It became reckless, you know. It was a lot of mess. And that's just one, that's not the whole thing. I'm not saying that's what the whole reason why I stopped, but that's just a, a, an idea of what was going on. I mean, the drama in the dance community is like fucking high school, bro. Um, and I'm not the type of person that likes to play, play those games. I know you need to network, and I know you need to, you know, get on your P's and Q's, cross T's and dot your I's. I understand business I understand going out there and making a name for yourself but it was beyond that it was it was it was it's literally high school in North Hollywood and um the third thing was just it, it was a lot like and I say this looking in hindsight like it was definitely a blessing the traveling all the traveling and all the stuff that I was going through at that time like I wasn't mentally ready I was away from home months weeks at a time uh, I just wasn't mentally prepared to be in a space to where I was leaving. Like I said before, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I have empathy for a lot of things and a lot of people. So I wear that energy on me sometimes and I didn't know how, at that point in my life, I didn't know how to shake it off. 
you know, so if somebody was going through something, then I would feel it. If I was going through something, I would feel it, but 10 times deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be gone from my family. I missed a lot of birthdays from family and friends, and a lot of family would call me and say, you know, you know, you know, check in, and you ain't been around. And I, I just, like, I missed a lot of, I missed a lot of time being with my family, pursuing my dream. And like I said, it's bittersweet because it, 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 it was my dream, and I was able to pursue it. I was able to be, like, at the apex in the game where I was at. But like I said, I missed a lot. So it was like wear and tear on my mental. Not not only that, the travel, you know, um, I didn't always fly first class. I didn't always fly business class. Um, there were there were times where I was on flights for 16 hours. Um, there was times where I was on a flight where planes was, was leaking gas and we had to turn around and go back, which was a day or two layover. I've been on planes with uh, shout out to Nicole Kirkland because she was on the plane. She's sitting right next to me. I've been on planes in thunderstorms where we had to drop, we had to fly around the airport for 45 minutes just to get out the thunder and lightning. Like I've, all of that stuff is wear and tear on, on on your mental. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then you just got people who come and take from you. You know, they they come and uh, take. They they don't really give. They give because of what you, who you are and what you have. But then there's those few that, okay, the, oh, I won't say. There are those few that are genuine, and they love you, and they appreciate you for who you are. But then the majority of the people, they want to be around you because of who you are and what you have. And not only is traveling and teaching and being around people and all that is su such an energy drainer, you have people that want to come and take your energy. And not only that, you mix it in with the first two about the repetitiveness and then the messiness. It's just a whole... Um, it's just a whole heap of, of, drain, of drainage. So with that, like, in the process of all that, I just started thinking about what's next. Like, at that point in time, I've never had a full-time job. You know, so it was kind of like, what's next for me? Like, if I stop dancing right now, what do I have? What can I evolve into? You know, I didn't have, day, I didn't have health. I didn't have um, a 401k. I had no benefits. I had none of that because it's all, when they pay you, they pay you. You know what I'm saying? Like, next step for me was my clothing brand. That was me trying to uh, venture out of dance and do something else creative and something else that I also enjoy doing. I couldn't really dive into it like I wanted. Did I do it? Yeah. Was I able to be a little bit successful? Yeah. Was I able to create something and, and, and run, a, run a business? Yeah. But again, being gone three weeks at a time, not being consistent with the brand, kind of like messed it up. And it, at first it felt exclusive because it was like, all right, it's King Gutter, it's King Motion, whatever you call me at the time. He dropping a t-shirt or he dropping a whatever, I'm gonna get it, it ain't gonna be that many. I, 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 you know, it was the name of the game, which was cool, but again, the inconsistency of it kind of like killed the brand. And I had to keep changing the name because, because of copyrights, you know? And let's not talk about the pressure, you know what I'm saying? I don't never, I don't never fold under pressure when it comes to my talents. That's not where the pressure came from. For me, the, the pressure came from the expectation and being there for other people. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I put a, I put a lot of myself. If you, if you know me, you know the type of person I am. I put, I'm, I'm heavy on myself. Like, I'm the hardest, I'm, the big, I'm my biggest critic, basically. So, yeah, with all of that, it was just like my mental, my mental was just not there. So I really didn't, I really didn't, oh, I did try to act. Well, I didn't try, I did act. I was acting. I was in a movie, a feature film that was in, uh, featured on Sundance, and it was in theaters. But again, I was just so focused on dance because I felt like once I left dance, that it would be, that it would be it. Like I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to jump back in the circuit. You know what I'm talking about? So those are the reasons why I stepped away from dance. But once a dancer, always a dancer. So if I'm not gonna dance then I got to contribute to it at least some way, shape, or form. And that's why we're on this channel.